1.8 million for an average priced home. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from realestate.com.au, originally from the Daily Telegraph. You ain't seen nothing yet what house prices will cost by 2020, 2030. So, Sydney house prices may be expensive now, but they could pale in comparison to what future generations will pay. Analysis of the housing trends revealed Sydney house prices will average nearly 1.8 million by the end of the decade, up from 1.06 million currently, if they continue rising at the same price as the last 30 years. Apartment buyers will also pay staggering prices with the median rising for the current from the current 780,000 to 1.26 in 2030 the mo modeling suggests and this is only 9 years away guys i mean that's just crazy can you see wages increasing at the same rate here's the chart from the rba's attempts to previously predict wage increases maybe it just means average families are not going to be owners in sydney anymore it comes as Aussie home loans and CoreLogic data showed Sydney prices grew at an annual rate of 5.4% in the years between 1990 and 2020. Aussie home loans chief executive James Simmond said historic trends were no guarantee of future performance, but it was clear that what was considered expensive today would be cheap in the future. Or what are we seeing? Just the devalue inflation and the devaluation of our purchasing power, guys, if you're going to go 1.8 million by 2030 in Sydney. Or is this just more FOMO to get people to jump into the market? They're thinking, oh, I've got to get in, I've got to get in. But we've had the first recession in 28 years, and how much has the government done to intervene in the market? Do you really think in the next nine years that they won't intervene more? Remember, housing is the piñata. This is my favorite favorite quote now. Just the piñata that they hit to make economic activity spill out. It's like their candy. It's, it's, it's their solution to all the problems. Do you think it couldn't go on for another 10 years? The market is on fire. And that's without all the demand we're used to from high migration, he said. Prices can still go up a lot. We ain't seen nothing yet. He added that many balked at the prospect of current prices a decade ago, but they became reality. Even growth at half the annual rate of the past 30 years would put prices well beyond where they are today, he said. Every decade we think it will be impossible for growth to continue, but property just keeps proving to be an incredible asset, he said. CoreLogic, head of research Tim Lawless, said it was impossible to know exactly where the market would be in 10 years, but the, that uh, most likely outlook was for more growth, especially in the short term. This was due to a mix of low interest rates, giving buyers high budgets, a severe shortage of available housing, and a growing appetite for families for bigger houses, he said. I mean, I looked, uh, I'm demolishing my house now. I literally am tearing down, I'm, Stripping, roofing, tearing, removing, cladding, tearing down walls. You know, there's a whole portion of it I have to demolish. And I'm just, I was thinking yesterday, I'm pulling this apart, uh, you know, this room, and you think, these things are put together pretty simply. I mean, it's an old house, guys. I got weatherboard, and, you know, I had VJ lining the walls. I just had to strip it with a few nails. It's pretty, pretty easy to pull apart, but pretty simple to build. And you think how much it can earn for what, it's, what it costs to build. It's just ludicrous. So, I mean, here you go. Annual growth rate of 5.4%. So some of these areas were, you know, if you look back to 1990, it's over 500% growth in that period in 30 years. A decade ago, a 1 million median seemed impossible, but gradual growth has got it to where it is, Mr. Lawless said. So here we, I mean, this is what they're looking at. Point Piper from 8.5 to 13.6. Watson's Bay, 4.4 to 7.1. I mean, these these are all insane high-quality suburbs. Realestate.com.au chief economist Nerida Conisby said some of the strongest drivers of high prices were too deep-rooted in Sydney's geography to dis disappear anytime soon. Sydney needs more houses, 
but there are geographic limitations in how many more can be built that you don't get in, say, Melbourne, she said. Town planning has also been made it difficult for there to be high levels of high-density development in many areas. McCrath Coogee agent Charles Stevens said low listing numbers meant there was additional energy in the market for frustrated buyers. I just read another article, I was looking at it, where the people paid hundreds of thousands above reserve another one you know another one of these stories they've been looking for three years people are just getting desperation and the question is you know what happens if we get a get a correction if we got a 30 percent correction guys in property could you time the market if you've been waiting 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 for a big correction would you be able to jump in would you time the market I mean, that's the hardest thing as well no one wants to overpay, but people reach a point where they get sick of missing out, so they push themselves to the max. That keeps prices up, he said. Ray White, Earlwood agent, Dean Vassell, said there was a widespread fear from home seekers they would miss the chance to get a home at a low price. Are oh, these low prices? It's, it's FOMO driving the market, everyone. Why is the government stimulating the housing sector when FOMO does such an effective job? In a way, it's understandable. He said a median of 1.8 million may seem hard to swallow now, but it's worth remembering that the results a few years ago where people said the price was nuts and have ended up proving to be a wise investment. Homeowner Aaron Stockdale said recent price rises encouraged him to list his garden apartment on Riverview Road in the inner west suburb of Earlwood and started looking for a large house out west. The unit will go to auction on April 10th. From what I've seen in the housing market, it peaks and troughs, but in the end, it always goes up, Mr. Stockdale said. Well, we've only seen, I mean, how old is he? Doesn't say. We've only seen good times. This is the first recession in 28 years. The last recession, I was in grade two. I remember uh, my father, you know, being stressed because construction projects were shutting down. It's why we moved to Queensland from Victoria. Every month we've looked and prices have gone up. We figure we'd better buy before it's too late. Tristan Ross and Krista Murphy are taking their garden apartment on Goodwin, Goodwood Street in Kingston to auction April 17th and had mixed feelings about the market. Mr. Ross said they were glad the market was strong but were trying to be reasonable when buying their next home and wanted to avoid rushing to get ahead of the next price rise. We want to assess what to do after our sale, he said. It's not just about price. Everything really depends on what you can find. You want to make sure it's a good place. So, I mean, there you go, everyone. $1.8 million houses in Sydney by 2030. It's only 10 years away, guys. Nine years away. This year's already a quarter over. We're already in March in 2021. What do you reckon? Can you see it happening? Would it be good for the country? If we have even more incentive just to stick in property, what's going to happen? Where will Australia be in 10 years' time? Would they open the migration floodgates to keep people coming in, to keep the property market going? What other interventions could they do to keep property at the level where it is? Because that's, that's the real question, I think. Not if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing or property is a good investment or not, is what interventions will the political class do and what price will future generations have to pay to keep property at a, well, at frankly, a bubble level? And then what would be the long-term consequences for the complexity of our economy and other industry in Australia? Because why would you go through the hassle of starting a business, hiring staff, jumping through those hoops, dealing with the red tape, the green tape, the politics, when you just buy a house, sit on it. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Where do you think Sydney prices will be in 2030 or even prices in Melbourne or Brisbane or any of the other few cities that we have in this country? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Take care, guys. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.